what stuff is being developed currently now? I mean, there's a lot of talk in the news just over the last few days about this TR-3B, which is supposed to be a triangular flying machine, which flies on magnets. And apparently the patent was released to the public recently. Now, there's a lot of controversial around that, whether it was or it wasn't. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of people that have actually filmed this TR-3B or a number of them flying around, and they have been flying around for a while now. They're very quiet, they fly very fast, they defy gravity. I mean, what do you know about the TR-3B? Is this just science fiction? Is it someone's uh, having a vision <laughs> or an hallucination? Or, or, or is well, it actually real? The, uh, the original information about the TR-3B came out from a man named Edgar Fouché at the International UFO Congress back in 1998. He claims to have seen one at Groom Lake in 1979, okay. and, and these black triangles, they have been seen all around the world since the mid-1970s. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of cases that we can review here. Uh, for instance, a case by a 30-year retired police officer, and I've got the whole briefing right here where he was coming out of a music concert with his wife. Yeah. I have his original sketch. Yeah. And uh, he, he's driving home around 11.30 p.m. He looks off to the left, and out from this dark cloud comes this 200-foot-per-side black triangle that had a white light at each corner. It had a white light at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then it also had this cross-beam and girder construction on the inside walls of the craft. Okay. And this is basically... Uh, 1990, August 25th, near Barnsley, England. Okay. So that's what he saw. And what's interesting to note is we're constantly seeing the same understructure on these vehicles. On the Hudson Valley Boomerang, 82 to 89, we saw tubes, pipes, and cylinders on the bottom of the vehicle. Okay. On the January 5th Southern Illinois Triangle, we saw the same tubes, pipes, and cylinders. Yeah. And then even on these triangles, we're seeing this cross beam and girder construction. So what I like to present is, are we looking at evidence of an alien technology or are we looking at the evidence of a man-made technology? These things create a low frequency electrical humming noise as they fly over. Yeah. Uh, they disrupt car radios, they stop cars, uh, they have multicolored flashing lights, um, you know, and this is the, this is really evidence of a man-made technology, not an alien technology. Yeah, why, why, why do you think it's not an alien technology? Because it has lights on it. Because a lot of times these are tested on Thursday nights. Okay. Many times they test these on Thursday nights. And Thursday nights within the military-industrial complex is reserved for test flights. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That is the pre-flight yeah. Thursday's test flight, Friday's debrief, Saturday, yeah. Sunday, there's nobody there. So when okay. you hear about some strange sighting on a Thursday night, more than likely it's one of ours. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So this technology for the TR-3B is because some people speculate that it comes from the Roswell crash, that they found an alien craft in Roswell, they reverse engineered it, and they built the TR-3B. Is, is that the case, or is this just you know man coming up with the idea I don't know, something came from Nikola Tesla or something like that, and they developed this technology. I mean, what, what, where, where do you think it originally comes from? Because it, isn't it pr the propulsion of this TR-3B electric magnetism? Well, if you look at the reference works, uh, in 1955, it looks like they made a breakthrough there. A lot of different universities and defense contractors were working hard to crack the gravity barrier. This is like 1954, 1955, yeah. and from that time forward, it looks like they have made a breakthrough. So the question is, you know, why would they fly Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin yeah. on a liquid rocket Saturn V when they already made the breakthrough over ten years ago? So do you think they so went to the? So are you that saying that they went to the moon earlier than 1969? Well, I can't prove that, okay. but if you look at the reference works, they all talk about how there's all these universities and there's all these defense contractors trying. And to break the gravity barrier, this is like in 1955. So yeah. when you throw billions of dollars in black budget funding, no congressional oversight, no public scrutiny, yeah. you can come up with something incredible. So, so where is all this going now? Because obviously if this technology was to become mainstream, where we are living in right. an economy which is oil-based, and now there's a lot of talk about electric aircraft, uh, there's a lot of talk about biofuels, which is obviously going to kill the oil industry, because if people can grow crops in their back garden and turn that into fuel... 
Uh, that's one way of powering a flying machine or, or a car. Or if everybody's going to buy a Tesla car and, and drive around in a, on, on an electric car, that's, in a, to a certain extent, going to kill the oil industry, even though a lot of the Tesla car is built from oil-derived materials. But, you know, we, we can soon change that. What's coming up for the future? And, it, and, and this is obviously going to be a major disruption in, in, the, in the economy. Well, it'd be great if we could see some of that uh, sonic boom suppression technology. But again, if they do that, they can't charge you $5,000 for a trip from Phoenix to Heathrow Airport. Yeah. They can't do that because it doesn't cost that much anymore. Yeah. So you can see how they're going to shoot themselves in the foot if they release that technology. I don't know if we'll ever see that technology. I mean, it was launched in 1969. We've got the 747. We're at the 50-year anniversary now, and we're not flying any faster now than we were in 1969. And yeah. you already know that. So yeah. why, why are we so far backwards in this technology? Part of it is a lot of that is being applied to military applications on hypersonic vehicles, on VTOL aircraft, uh, on, on generally, or basically, you can take an F-16 and apply that technology too. And the Russians do a lot of that as well. But I honestly, I don't even know if we're ever going to see that technology trickle down to the common person. Yeah, well, you, you know that, uh, I mean, uh, Elon Musk, and I did an interview with Mr. Zubrick from the Mars Society a while back. It's on here on BizJet TV. You can see the link here above for those of you that are watching this. And he was talking about, you know, Elon, there's a lot of focus about Elon Musk taking people to Mars. But in reality, SpaceX rockets are also designed to take anybody from anywhere to anywhere on this planet in less than an hour on a rocket. So you imagine putting 100 seats in a rocket and flying them from A to B. And it looks like Elon Musk wants to make that happen, which is why he's landing and taking off vertically with these rockets. And I can see in the next five years, maybe 20 to 30 cities around the world with these special ports for the rockets and flying, I don't know, Vancouver, Shanghai in 35 minutes, LA to London in, in 45 minutes. But again, rocket is powered by, you know, old technology compared to what you're talking about. Does that Elon Musk know about this technology you've been talking about? I mean, how, 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 where does this play into it? Such a good question. I've been thinking about whether these big wigs in the space industry are even aware of this technology. You know, it, it sounds great. What SpaceX is doing, it sounds great. It's inspiring. I watched the Falcon launch. I, I'm, I'm following it, you know, on a weekly basis. But if what Ben Rich said is true, where he said that we have technologies, we have things in the Nevada desert that are 50 years beyond what you can even comprehend, if that's true, if the implications of what that means are actually true, then Elon Musk and a lot of these other startups and space it's all tinker toys. It's all Model A, it's dinosaur, it's obsolete technology. They're still using liquid, solid rockets. It's a done deal. It's over. It's tinker toys compared to what they're really doing. So it was great more insight there from the aerospace engineer and researcher Michael Schratt who just been telling us about some really interesting things. If you want to get in contact with Michael or want Michael to speak at your conference, you can ping him below, the email below here. So that's all from Fat Boy here at BizJet TV. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and comment below and like this video. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.